this series underpins the urgency to step up the fight against this epidemic. In fact, we have just 135 months left to end TB as promised by 193 countries. They are promised to end it by 2030. And in India, we have just 75 months left because our prime minister has promised to end TB by 2025. But it seems that business as usual might not work in meeting the NTB strategy targets and even that NTB goal of 2030. So new and fresh thinking is vital to reimagine every critical cog in the wheel to NTB, as well as to accelerate progress towards other SDGs. Today's episode of NTB Dialogues features two very special guests. We have with us Charlotte Christiansen, team leader of operations at Unit 8, and Dr. Dennis Falzen, medical officer at the Global TB program of the WHO. WHO's Global TB program has been spearheading the fight against TB for several decades, as all of us know. And Unit 8 not only invests in innovations to prevent, diagnose, and treat diseases uh, like tuberculosis, but also plays a crucial role in helping implement them so that they reach the people for whom they are meant. We at CNS have had a long association with both WHO's Global TB program as well as with Unit 8. So we are all the more grateful to our special guests today for finding time to speak with us despite their very, very busy schedule. So welcome Charlotte and Dennis. Uh, Thank you. Can you please share some of the new innovations to prevent, diagnose, and treat latent TB and childhood TB, particularly, but for other forms of TB as well? Okay, so um, I'm, I'm Dennis Palzo, I'm a medical officer with the Global TB program. Um, I think before we, we say that, maybe we can start with uh, some of the latest uh, snapshots on. TB situ the TB situation in the world as presented in the WHO Global TB report that was re released last week and which shows that, um, um, that there has been important uh, uh, improvements in notification globally uh, for TB um, this has increased substantially since previous um, years. Um, however, we are still uh, away from the um, from the incidence, uh, reaching the whole of the estimated incidence of TB uh, globally. Um, and, uh, and again, um, still the progress towards preventing what was um, required um, to uh, lead to the decline in TB in the coming years to reach the uh, targets envisaged by the NTB strategy um, in less than 20 years time now that is left. Uh, I think the important innovations that we are seeing today uh, encourage us that the way forward um, is, uh, is, is, is could be achieved and could be improved upon from the progress that we are seeing today. Uh, we have uh, new uh, pipelines on diagnostics, both for latent TB infection as well as for uh, active TB, uh, meaning that more there will be a greater possibility for more countries with a large burden of TB in the world to be able to take action early on, even before uh, people who are at risk of um, active TB get the disease and put in um, new treatments. So we are seeing um, new regimens, for instance, to shorten the treatment for um, latent tuberculosis infection. And the standard treatment for latent TB infection was uh, traditionally um, six months or more. Uh, nowadays, um, you can reduce this to uh, even three months of weekly um, treatment. And we're looking also into the new guidelines now that will be um, released into early next year if this uh, the possibility to reduce it even further in terms of duration. So I think these are important um, developments on the latent TB uh, field. There will be, um, we are, WHO will be looking at new tests 
to uh, detect latent TB infection so that we have more certainty on the people who get the treatment are the ones that are uh, more likely to benefit from this um, latent TB um, infection. Um, treatment. Um, we are also um, looking at new diagnostics for um, active um, tuberculosis. So um, I think new, um, new, new, new diagnostics will be coming forward in the coming um, in the coming years, uh, and and also new treatments will be provided with drug susceptible and drug um, resistant TB. So so I think the pipeline is encouraging um, as we move forward. And, uh, and I think from, from the beginning, um, we are trying to make sure that any new um, technologies which are introduced, be it for um, prevention, for diagnostic, for treatment, are scalable. So, so they have, um, we try as much as possible that they are um, affordable, first of all, that they have a good safety profile, that they are effective, right? And that they have other attributes like shorter duration, for instance, to make them more easy for uh, people um, to, to, to be able to put them and roll them out at the, at the um, scale that is required to have perceptible um, effect on the TB epidemic. Uh, uh, anything about uh, what is in the pipeline for new diagnostics for latent TB? Okay, so there are a number of tests um, to look at both um, use in as, as skin testing, so um, um, new antigens that can be used to, um, to to replace the current sort of standard of um, of skin testing with with the purified, purified protein derivative. Um, there have been issues to get quality assured um, PPD uh, available to the settings where it's needed most uh, in the recent um, years. So we're trying to actively work and many of the partners that are actively engaged in this um, to make this to put this on a better sort of um, ground and um, and hopefully we will have in a very short um, short uh, foreseeable future uh, the possibility to to look at these um, the, the the effectiveness of these um, of these new um, uh, skin testing but also on the field of uh, of the um, EGRA tests right um, and we have a number of um, new uh, tests as well um, showing uh, promise and which we'll be evaluating in a, also in the same sort of time frame. Okay. And as you said uh, rightly that uh, not only the tests have to be as far sensitive as possible, but also scalable and also cost effective because, uh, and workable at the field level. Indeed, yes, and indeed, and we, we need to make sure that um, whenever they are needed, they can be used, right, um, that there aren't, apart from the price issues and the short, uh, the stock issues that, um, <clears throat> that, that the uh, healthcare workers feel the need to test, uh, particularly in certain groups at risk, right, um, um, before, before starting the treatment, and these will be important um, um, adjuncts to the to the work that they are doing to identify um, eligible people and put them as, as fast as possible on, on preventive treatment. Okay. Uh, what about implementation on the field of the existing innovations which we have and, and their impact? Yes. So um, before I hand over to my um, colleagues from UNITATE who will speak about the, the important work that they are funding, uh, I think if you look at the global statistics, we can see that if you do, if you look at maybe the three main um, target groups for uh, which were identified by countries last year at the United Nations um, high level um, <clears throat> high level meeting, um, I think we have s significant progress on moving ahead with uh, people living with HIV to get coverage um, and fast enough, and we anticipate that by the end date of 2022 we will be achieving that um, target, which was. Um, which was uh, mandated by the UNHLM. Um, however, in the space of contacts, we are um, moving much, much more slow, and countries need to step up um, um, the work that they are doing to identify contacts, both children who are under five, but particularly those who are five years and older, and to put them um, on, on, on treatment fast enough. Um, because I think these are the groups which will make or break the, um, the, the, the target that was set um, forward. Um, we are today at the end of a one-day um, discussion with stakeholders. 
um, um, from the unit aid and grants, and I think um, my colleagues here will discuss this um, a bit more. And I think it's encouraging to see many national TV programs, many other partners come together to discuss the innovative work that they are doing, particularly in this space of LTBI, but also in other areas, for instance, neglected areas um, like childhood TB, um, which has been an area of where, where um, the, the, the amount of progress has been so um, delayed in compared to other areas of TB where, where a lot of work has been done in the last few years. And, uh, and I think it's really encouraging to, to see this um, innovative work um, bearing fruit in the, in, in, the, in the small number of years that, uh, that this has been um, catalyzing. Yes, Charlotte, we would like to hear from you. Yes. Hello. Yes, hello. Yes, we can hear you. So, I, uh, did you hear the question that uh, I'm interested in knowing whether innovations uh, in the field of latent TB and, T and childhood TB, where have they been implemented in the field? Uh, maybe you can share that. And what has been their impact? Thank you so very, very much. Um, we are, as Dennis said, we are just yes now today, you are calling us just coming out from a meeting that we had with NTPs and several of our grantees that we have met to talk about exactly those kind of grants, latent TB and childhood TB. So I'm going to hand over to my colleague Draurio, he's our TB uh, strategic expert, and he will talk a little bit more about this. Okay. Thank you so much. Hello. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Well, uh, as uh, my colleagues uh, told before, uh, we we have already uh, some projects ongoing in both areas in childhood TB and uh, latent TB. Uh, currently, we have two projects that were discussed here to to improve detection because uh, detection of uh, kids because we have a as you know. A very large number of, of children that's not detected by any uh, uh, program. So uh, uh, we are supporting projects to, to, to increase the detection of uh, childhood tuberculosis. And uh, uh, also uh, uh, other projects working with latent TB to, to get a better and shorter uh, treatment, as Dennis said about the, the, the 12 uh, week uh, uh, treatment for, for latent TB. Uh, beyond those uh, projects, uh, we are also uh, funding or co-funding projects uh, to establish the, 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 the safety and the, the efficacy of uh, these new drugs for children below two years old. So uh, uh, currently we can use rifapentine for, for adults, adolescents and also for, for children, but not for those below two years old. Now we are funding a study to, 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 to assess if it's safety, if it's safe to, 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 to give these drugs for, for children. And also um, other uh, studies to, to assess the drug-drug the drug interaction with other drugs used by, by HIV program to see if it's safe also to use uh, these drugs to prevent TB in people that are uh, taking uh, antiretroviral drugs. Mm -hmm. So uh, beyond that, we are starting to, to, to evaluate uh, new, not new drugs, but drugs, uh, 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 fluoroquinolones, to, to prevent uh, uh, MDR-TB, not only for, for tuberculosis, but also for uh, multi-drug resistance uh, tuberculosis. Uh, we are just, uh, we will announce that during the, this week in the, the, the Union Conference uh, some new projects uh, that uh, were approved by, by UNITAID to, to, to receive uh, grants. Mm -hmm. uh, one of those projects is addressing uh, uh, formulation, uh, pediatric formulations for second-line drugs. So today we, we have several drugs for, for treatment of MDR, but not all of these drugs can be used for children. So we are funding uh, 
the Stellenbosch University from South Africa to develop new formulations and not only new formulations, but also if possible to put together these drugs in a, a, a fixed dose combination. I don't know if I'm forgetting something you want to, to add. Yes, uh, uh, well, uh, about LTBI, uh, as you know, we are funding uh, uh, the Oro Institute with the Impact 40B uh, project uh, in 12 countries, right, Katya? 12 countries. 12 countries in three continents in uh, Africa, Asia, and, and Latin America. Uh, to demonstrate that it's feasible to, to, to scale up the, the new regimen uh, with rifapentine plus isoniazid in 12 weeks uh, doses. Uh, and this uh, was a big challenge because the price of the drug is really expensive for, for, for programs to, 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 to adopt. So we are dealing with the, the, the manufacturer to, to, to have a, a significant discount and, uh, and other partners as well. We are discussing with other partners in this negotiation. And we uh, are going to announce uh, this agreement uh, during the, the union conference also, uh, 31st Thursday, next Thursday in the morning. 10.13 uh, uh, will be announced this new agreement. Uh, it's uh, still under embargo, I cannot tell anything okay. else, but uh, you are very welcome to, to attend this meeting. Okay. Thank you. Anything on diagnostics front also? Any, you know, anything in the pipeline? I, I think uh, uh, Dennis has addressed uh, the, the state of art. Uh, we really don't have anything on the market, but we have a rich pipeline for the first time in many, many years. Uh, I would just uh, add, not with official uh, uh, authorization from WHO, but uh, also we have uh, promising uh, uh, serological tests that are in phase two, phase three trials, mm -hmm. uh, and could be uh, a good uh, new uh, and promising innovation in diagnostic. It's not uh, anything for the next 12 months, mm -hmm. uh, but we are receiving uh, uh, and uh, studying some uh, uh, preliminary results from, from this kind of uh, uh, diagnostic test, mm -hmm. which will be great to detect latent TB specifically. So uh, these uh, kind of tests doesn't give the diagnosis of TB, but uh, can assure that you have the infection for, uh, with uh, the, the, the bacillus. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not something uh, for the next months, it's something to to be uh, uh, evaluated yet. No, that, that's okay, but, but it's there. I mean, it's yeah, the, the pipeline is really very robust. rich at this moment, not only for uh, new drugs, but also for new diagnostics and also vaccines. We have 14 new vaccines in different states, mm -hmm. and some of them, few of them, are in the, the end of the pipeline to be evaluated as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, as I had mentioned earlier that we were really impressed by how the gene expert was rolled out in Myanmar and I think UNITED played a big role in that. So uh, any challenges which uh, you foresee or see when uh, such products are scaled up or uh, brought to the field? What are the challenges in? Well, it's uh, a bit complex to talk yeah. about that because uh, First of all, uh, unfortunately, to date, we have just uh, these tests available in the market. But uh, uh, as uh, uh, Dennis said also, we have some new uh, tests coming next to the market, and, and including from here, from, from India, we have a manufacturer producing and being evaluated by WHO to, to pre-qualification another molecular test. Uh, we have another one in China, uh, in the, 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 the Chinese market. It's, it's not uh, uh, available for global markets, but it's already working there. Mm -hmm. So we have this uh, uh, news that can, can be uh, uh, maybe uh, competitors for, for experts in the near, near future. 
And then uh, uh, one of the big challenges is the price because even $998 uh, uh, for tests is not cheap, especially for developing countries. Mm -hmm. And I would like to, to, to add, uh, because you uh, remind me uh, talking about the expert, mm -hmm. that uh, we are funding uh, one of the, the projects uh, discussed here today, uh, the, from, led by the University of Bordeaux, uh, to, to use uh, uh, alternative samples in experts, mm -hmm. like uh, a stool, uh, and uh, nasopharynx aspirated. So it could be a good solution for diagnosed uh, 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 childhood TB. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's kind of a new, uh, WHO is evaluating uh, three mm -hmm. different uh, technologies to, to use these tools as sample for, for experts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, we now doing a, a propaganda. Uh, we are going to, to, to launch all the, the new uh, projects that we are going to fund uh, next Friday, 1st of November. Mm -hmm. The time I cannot... 12.15. 12.15, uh, during the, the Union Conference as well. So we'll be announced, announcing three new projects funded by UNITAID. Mm -hmm. One working with a diagnostic, uh, uh, next generation sequencing for... for Detecting resistance uh, of the, the stream of uh, 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 the mycobacterial tuberculosis. Another one addressing uh, adherence technologies, so to improve uh, adherence not only for treatment of tuberculosis but also for latent TB, even uh, six months of isoniazid or three months of rifampicin plus isoniazid, or even 12 doses of uh, rifampicin plus isoniazid could be improved uh, with uh, new digital technologies or, or well, adherence technologies. Mm -hmm. And the last one, uh, it's about uh, that, uh, this one that I just told about uh, from the Stellenbosch University to, to develop new formulations, new pediatric formulations, uh, and uh, maybe uh, uh, fix those combinations as well. Uh, Okay. I'm just asking if my colleagues yes, 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 sure. the information. Yes, yes, sure. Dennis. We would like. I would like uh, one take-home message from both uh, global uh, WHS Global TV program and from United uh, for the way forward to accelerate efforts to end TB. What is the take-home message from both of you? Right. So from my end, I think the message that we want to give is about the importance of innovations to try and achieve um, the NTB strategy targets and other targets that have been um, <clears throat> put forward. And without kind of having investment in catalytic kind of projects uh, where we try to reduce the gap between sort of launching an innovation, gathering the information, and establishing global policy and having countries roll out that policy um, at, at large scale, I don't think we can achieve those targets. And uh, we need breakthroughs, and Raul has mentioned as well the vaccines, which are an extremely important um, area of work, um, and we need to have a vaccine in a, in a near future. Um, so so without, without these um, sort of um, enthusiastic sort of follow-on from projects such as the ones that Unity the supporting uh, will uh, will not be able to to get there. So so I think my main message is really to move forwards from innovation to full scale and and and, and large scale um, in, in implementation as fast as possible. From innovation to implementation, what very catchy phrase? Yes, yes, Charlotte. Yes. Yes, and my point was actually going to be just the same. <laughs> we are Unity's role is to to work with innovation, right? We're supposed to to catalyze innovation, and, and uh, that's our carved out role in the global health response, right? But that is nothing without the scale up of those innovations, and we all need to work together to achieve that scale up with the um, all the, the the stakeholders at country level and at global level with the the large-scale donors as well as the, the the implementers and the governments and the civil society of course okay thank you dennis and charlotte
Thank you so much. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Bye. Friends, you were listening to Dr. Dennis Falzen, Medical Officer, Global TB Program of the WHO, and Charlotte Christiansen, Team Leader for Operations at UNITAID. In this episode of NTB Dialogues, which is a special CNS series presenting insightful and thought-provoking conversations with leaders to accelerate progress towards ending TB. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for the next episode of NTB Dialogues. Bye-bye. Thanks. Um, I think there was Draurio as well. You have to mention Dr. Draurio Barrera. Okay, okay. And doctor, how do I pronounce the name? Dr. Draurio, uh, last uh, name. Draurio Barrera. Yes, thank you very much for updating us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.